So I graduated chemical engineering at 23 with a GPA of 4.0 while running the Chemical Engineering Society, being a tutor, and being a content creator at the same time. But let me be absolutely clear, I was not born smart. I started with below average grades, I failed almost every single one of my tests in high school, and still managed to do well afterwards. I even had my own family question my academic future. When I was a kid, the smart ones were always the ones that would sit in front of class and hear a single thing that the teacher was saying. And automatically understand what was happening. I was never that kid. I was always the slow learner. It would take me ages to understand even the smallest concepts before it finally clicked. So to answer the question of every high achieving scholar, are we born smart or are we nurtured to be smart? The simple answer is it's not one thing or the other. You need to understand the data, not just the drama. Let's quickly dissect the science behind this so that you're not constantly blaming your DNA for this. Firstly, the nature side. I pulled this number from study.com. They estimate that 50 to 80 percent of intelligence is genetic which is a huge endowment no doubt however the environment is still a huge piece which is confirmed by medicine plus genetics this lists an external factor or external factors like education nutrition that plays a part into quote-unquote intelligence now to kind of tie this all together study.com did a review on adoption study that showed how a nurturing home that is focused on educational achievement could significantly raise a child's iq this happens because the iq test is just a standardized measure of your problem solving and reasoning skills. So the overall conclusion is that both sources agree intelligence is a complex trait. It is a true mix of nature and nurture. It's not one or the other. For me, a big part about becoming smart was accepting my mediocre starting point and decided I was just going to engineer my own intelligence. Now, there's a lot of things that came before this that a lot of people would think that naturally I'd be smart. My dad has a bachelor's in civil engineering, which he completed a year early because he didn't want to do the entire four years of university. After that, he did his master's degree in an MBA. Following that, he did a PhD. So with all of this, especially during a time where PhDs weren't very common yet, my dad was one of the more advanced scholar in my area. And therefore, a lot of people would automatically think that I, the eldest daughter, would be also just as smart as he is. But clearly, as you've seen from this video, that wasn't always the case. I was born maybe particularly smart when I was younger because my parents nurtured me to be that way. But over time, I started to slack off a lot more. And because of that, I would say, quote unquote, I become less smart. So if you click on this video, you already have the most important genetic trait, the constant will for self-improvement. So congratulations. Congratulations, you've done your first big step. I pulled this advice from Professor Michael Watkins, who is a professor of leadership in the IMD Business School and the author of the six disciplines of strategic thinking. He advises that we should be focusing on the improvements because research shows definitively that by focusing on the improvements, you can get much better at being an effective strategic thinker or other words, quote unquote, smart. And that's when I realized that being slower than other kids back then didn't make me dumber. I was curious, ambitious, and I was always constantly wanting to exceed my own expectations and be better than I was yesterday. Because of that, I am always constantly looking for improvements in myself day and day and day afterwards, which is the same exact thing that I do with my students as well. If they come to me saying, oh, I failed this monthly test because I didn't study enough, I'd be like, that's completely fine. I am not worried because I see you improving in lesson. And the improvements doesn't always come with the grades itself. It also comes with the idea of the student itself being able to ask more questions, being more confident in their own answers, and also having the critical thinking to be able to break down the concepts. The more they do that and the more they improve on that, the more likely they will get better grades in the end. So my kind of goal when it comes to tutoring students is never really just like, oh yeah, you get this grade on your test, you get this grade on your mocks, you get this grade on your exams. It's more the inventive thinking and the more critical thinking part that will allow them to build up on that even further even after a levels so for those of you who want to be smarter but weren't equipped from the get-go like me and want to level up your intelligence and grades then here are the five non-negotiable disciplines i implemented firstly stop memorizing the formulas or facts in isolation you're never gonna be able to do a test when you're just memorizing the formula and be able to do the test afterwards as well because by the time that test is over your brain will automatically forget because our brain isn't equipped to remember things just for the pure 
thing of remembering it. It understands better when it can understand the concept and link it to real life scenarios. So that means you can do it in a number of ways. Firstly, you can either take up the master equation, what where the equation was derived from. So that's the master equation and understand what that master equation is trying to tell you. For example, if we're looking at kinetic energy all we're looking at is just a mass with a certain speed and with that we can find the average of that speed and mass together and therefore we get kinetic energy technically it's just looking at a change in energy when there's momentum changing there's a lot of things like this when i studied chemical engineering where i didn't understand what the other equations were but i understood the master equations if i understood the master equations the rest of it would become super simple because everything is derived from that Secondly, I also understand everything by deriving units. And this is a more practical way of doing it. So in the exam, if you're doing a STEM degree or even a STEM subject, when you're looking at the units, you can always derive what the equation is going to be. For example, if it's kg per centimeters cubed, that's mass over volume, density literally just that now the other way of memorizing things if you don't understand the master equations is to link it to your day-to-day -day life this is the key to making things click it gives you the context to adapt and problem solve so even when you forget the formula you still understand the concepts because you've linked it to a situation in your life or in your day-to-day -day life like right now for example water flowing through a cup you can see what's happening there and you can visualize and therefore see the concepts in your mind as well so my tip is if the article or the equation or the textbook or whatever you're reading sound looks and sounds boring, then I want you to start with great educational YouTube channels like Khan Academy or Chris Gazat in order to see the high quality documentary series or high quality documentary series on Netflix, HBO, whatever it is that you're watching on so that you can get the fundamentals of it in a fun way. After all of this, your brain will often forget what it deems to be unimportant. So to force retention, you want to review your notes within 24 hours of your lecture or, or learning it for the first time. Not for an hour, but for a high intensity 10 to 15 minute session. So you just use your flashcards or something like that, but fully focus on it so that you can recall all of the information that you learned before. And this is where you will actively quiz yourself as well. When you do this, you will solidify the memory in your mind and your short term memory will become long term storage. And that means you will maximize your return on time because you're not going to waste time in the future trying to do the same thing you're doing now. Trust me, discipline beats genius. Thirdly, smart people don't just ace one subject, they can connect the subjects together. I see this a lot as a tutor, to be honest. A lot of the students come to me and they say, I understand this in chemistry, I understand this in biology, but I don't know how to link them together. Especially chemistry and biology, there's a lot of linking topics in there. So what I want you to do, and this is what I do with my students, is to force yourself to find a link within each one. For me, I guide them onto doing this. So I actually give a real life scenario that uses both chemistry and biology in order to help them to link the ideas together and see how it plays out in real life. If you are unable to do this for yourself, then I would suggest asking someone, asking your seniors, asking your teachers to help you with this, or even asking ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever AI that you wanna use. You are living in a world of technology right now. There's so many resources out there to help you. You are not confined to your own mind and anymore. So make sure you open wide and look at the other possibilities as well. So let's take, for example, how does the concept of supply chain optimization in economics relate to cellular processes in biology? This kind of cross training will build cognitive bridges that allow you to synthesize new information faster, making you genuinely smarter in all domains because you can link the whole world together. And number four, the one more question mandate. This is the important part. You want to stop settling for understanding. In every study session, you must ask an answer one more question than you think is necessary. If the professor is asking you to define a term, you need to also ask yourself, what is the historical origin, for example? Or you can say, what are the three most common misconceptions about it? When you ask yourself further question, it helps you to build critical thinking and helps you to understand what the actual concept is without knowing about it further or reading about it further. It's kind of like predictive thinking in a way. But by building this habit, it will force you into a state of active inquiry and it pushes your knowledge base past the average. I do this a lot even in school. Because of this, when I go into my exams, I'm able to predict what the next question will be because even just by looking at the first part of the question or even looking at the diagram, I'm already thinking about 
What is this going to come up with? Where can I see? Where have I seen this data before? What type of questions usually come up about this? What are the misconceptions? What keywords link into this and into that? And all of that happens within a split second in my mind. With that, I'm able to predict the entire question in the paper itself. And lastly, if you fail on a subject or if you fail a test or whatever it is, I don't want you to wallow in self-pity. What I want you to do is to take that and review it. Imagine that this paper that you just failed is this key, is the literal treasure that will take you towards success. Because it literally is. It tells you exactly where you went wrong. It tells you exactly what you need to improve on. And it tells you exactly what topics you struggle with. If you know all of that, piece it all together, fix it, obviously you're going to do better in the next test. So here's what I want you to think about every time you fail a test and put it into a notebook that we're going to call as the failure log. Firstly, the exact achievement I failed to meet. What was that? Secondly, what did I actually do? What is the study strategy that I implemented and why it was wrong? Thirdly, what is the specific deficiency? Is it a lack of foundation? Poor time management in the exam? Was it rushed review? Did you cram your exams? Fourth, the new protocol for the next attempt. You're going to fix everything, basically just writing down the opposite of what you didn't do. And that's it. You don't have to reread your notes. You just have to rewrite the strategy. I am pretty sure that you know the knowledge already. You just don't know how to implement it. So this process is how you turn a temporary setback into a predictable future success. I truly believe that everyone can be smart. And that is purely because of my experience. If I myself was not the smart kid to begin with, with and then became the smart kid and you're watching me right now because I make videos about being a smart kid then obviously I have done it and you can do it too. If you want it enough it can be yours. I love this quote that we think was from Albert Einstein which said that if you teach a fish to climb a tree it will forever think that it is stupid. My interpretation of that is that I can be an I can be smart in my own way because I know how to swim, but I will not be able to climb a tree just because somebody else is climbing a tree. And therefore, the environment itself is not the right one for me. When I fix that mindset and realize that the environment was not built for me and I have to do this myself, that was when I unlocked my academic comeback and locked it in for good. So yeah, I get asked all the time and people constantly assume that I am just always smart and I was born smart. I'm always good at studying, blah, 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 blah. Trust me, I wasn't. I do want to acknowledge a critical truth, however, which is that having the focus, time, access, and resources to properly study is a major privilege to have. And that was something that I initially took for granted. I was given the privilege to have all of the resources that I need. I had tutors. I had eight hours of tutoring in a week on top of school and still did volunteering. And I didn't have any other responsibilities except for just doing that. I didn't have any chores. I didn't have to do a job. I didn't have to take care of my family. So because of that, I am so incredibly grateful to have that childhood growing up. When I went into university, that all changed and I had to work in order to support myself in a completely different country with nobody else around here. So I was doing everything for myself and I saw the two different sides of the world. So I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is how hard we are working is always at different levels and contexts. So what matters is that you take the gifts that were given to you, no matter how big or how small it is, and make use of it as much as you can and take it to new heights because it is given to you. It is yours for you to take. So take it and make it into something that you will be proud of. So recognize the environmental influences and aggressively dedicate yourself towards improvement. You cannot control what you were born with, but you can 100% control what you make of it. And that will shape you into the person that you want to become. But don't forget that we are always constantly learning. Everything changes, you will change as well. So adapt and improve and you will be fine. Aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and share it with your friends that you think may also find it helpful. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!